Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? Okay, Brian, let's go do this uh, Arlington Park at Churchill Downs special edition of Horse Center. Yeah, this this edition makes me sad, Matt. Uh, you know Arlington Park, Arlington International Racecourse was a favorite place of mine. So uh, I've had time to process its closing, of course, since last year, but it's still a little bit of a sad day as uh, Arlington Park is no longer and Churchill Downs now hosts uh, several of the big turf races, including their two biggest, which we are going to talk about this week, the Arlington Million and the Beverly D both moved to a mile and eighth on a turf course map, which is, is questionable here. We're going to run two turf races on Saturday at Churchill Downs. A special day opening just for this card. And uh, I guess the two turf courses will be run at different sections of the turf course here. So they are only basically running one race on each part of the turf course on Saturday, just because of the root system not being fully developed here. Long story short, though, we're on the turf. We have two pretty good races on the grass, which we always like to handicap, Matt. Let's start with the Arlington Million. The favorite is smooth like straight, but I don't think we have a heavy favorite in this Arlington Million. Yeah, it sure doesn't seem that way. And, you know, uh, like you mentioned, smooth like straight. Uh, we have listed as a 7-2 favorite based on, you know, some some pretty good performances Uh over the years for this uh speed favoring speed favoring horse uh who does his best running going a mile brian yeah he can be effective i think uh up to nine furlongs which we'll see in the million but yeah he's probably best known for a mile uh his uh last win which came seven races ago was grade one race the shoemaker mile it's been over a year, though, Matt. Uh, he continues to run fine races, strong races. He continues to run it against uh, the best middle distance horses in the country, but he's been second in most of them, third in the only other one. Um, speed, as you say, there is other speed in here. He seems like a very beatable favorite, but considering the company he's kept the last couple of years, I can see why he would go off the favorite. He's run well without winning a Churchill dance before. Uh, let's get to some of the others, though, Matt. One horse I like a little bit, I know, uh, is on the rail set piece, a Judmont homebred, trained by Brad Cox, ridden by Florent Giroux, Matt. This horse certainly has had no trouble winning at Churchill Downs in his past. Yeah, that's for sure. And another horse who has some really good performances uh, over, the, over the past years, most recently, uh, he was fifth in the Forbidden Apple, um, and before that won a race at Pimlico, I think it was during um, Preakness uh, weekend. And last year won the Wise Dan at Churchill Downs, won three in a row, uh, as you, were, I think, were alluding to. So there, there's a lot to like about uh, Set Piece. Yeah, he's, he's a come from behind her. Last time in the Forbidden Apple, won by City Man. Uh, he was really behind horses most of the stretch, didn't have a clear run. And that happens sometimes when you're coming from behind. Uh, he does like Churchill Downs, uh, different turf course than what he remembers, but uh, it's four or five at Churchill Downs, like he said, won three in a row. And he should have a little bit of pace to run at here in this million with the favorite and a few others. One of the others maybe is Santine, the number six horse, Matt. Santine's a horse who likes to stalk, and he could get a really good trip if smooth like straight and mega mega city are out there on the lead santine might sit third it was just two races back where santine became a grade one winner there's not a lot of grade one winners in this field matt but he became a grade one winner going nine furlongs at churchill down just two races ago yeah yeah in that in the turf classic at churchill downs i guess that was on this uh newly uh minted uh turf course so it's hard to know how similar it will be even to that new turf course that they were running on uh, most recently. Um, uh, uh, he uh, most recently was sixth up in New York in uh, Manhattan. So again, another one. I, I, to me, it seems to be the theme of this race, another one that 
has a nice, really good victory uh, in his past performances. And if he can run back to it, is definitely a win contender. Yeah, and a lot of them have won at Churchill Downs, interestingly. A, a lot of those wins are not at this new turf course, but something about familiarity with, uh, with a, a track you like, whether it is a newer track surface or not, there's something to that, I believe. And a bunch of them have won at Churchill Downs, Santine being the most recent. That grade one win, as Matt said, on Kentucky Derby Day was a very good performance, stalking the lead. Like I said, he could sit third and and uh, and sit a good trip, making the first run on the early leaders. Another one we have to talk about, Matt. We always have to talk about Chad Brown in these big turf races, and this may not be Chad Brown's big horse, but the the seven year old Sacred Life's been around for a while. He came over from France uh, about four years ago, and he's been knocking heads with good horses over the years. Still hasn't won a Grade One yet, though. Yeah, his most recent uh, win was at Monmouth Park in uh, in a grade three, one of those days when uh, Chad Brown, uh, uh, you know, brought his troops to Monmouth Park. Um, but uh, yeah, as it seems to, since uh, coming to the U.S., be, have been running in maybe, uh, and had success, maybe a little bit of a notch below some of the others. But like you said, uh, Chad Brown, um, and obviously it was when those races were in Chicago um, the last few years. It, it was uh, like running in Chad Brown's backyard the number of time races he won on Arlington Million Day. Yeah, Chad Brown has done very well in these uh, formerly Arlington races, especially the Beverly D. Uh, Sacred Life, yeah, you're right. Uh, I, I think he's... Uh, He's run in races a little bit below this in the past. But on the other hand, this is not, it's it's a very wide open, uh, I think it's a good betting race, but it's not one of the stronger grade ones we've seen. Certainly not one of the stronger Arlington Millions as it's uh, for, what, for whatever reason. Maybe it's the turf course, maybe it's the distance, maybe it's the move to Churchill Downs, but we don't see the international horses like we usually do and see in the Arlington Million. Sacred Life knocked heads last fall a couple times a couple battles with Field Pass. They exchanged photo finish wins late last year. And Field Pass certainly is another one we need to talk about coming from the part of Maker. Maker, Mike Maker has two horses in here, Matt. And it looks like Field Pass, the gray, is the one that is a more likely winner on Saturday. Yeah. And uh, anytime it's a big race and it's on the turf, you, you've got to give the horses from Mike Maker. Uh, an extra look, even if they don't quite seem to be in top form. Field pass was moved up to first um, in a in I think it was called the Texas Classic um, most recently, and and was third in the Arlington. That was a Grade Three run at Churchill Downs, and then third again at at Laurel. Um, we have him listed at eight to one in our morning. Yeah, Field Pass has been a horse, so I've kind of like Sacred Life, who's been knocking around uh, grade two, grade three types, but he's uh, he's usually run well. He's a horse who has just enough early speed, maybe a little bit, uh, not quite as much as Santine, but a horse that could stay close early and can make that move. Most of his races, uh, he is there in the stretch with a shot. He doesn't win a whole lot of them or at least not lately, but uh, he's a horse who can pop up at any time. Nine furlong seems like a good distance and uh, field pass. He is coming off a win at Lone Star, but his last two races were good. That Lone Star race, uh, Mega City, I guess, held on, but Mega City did bother field pass and get taken down. Uh, Mega City uh, is uh, speed, 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 and he's rather new to, to the maker barn mat. Uh, Mega City uh, just uh, turned in his first performance for Maker last time at Lone Star in that Texas Turf Classic, and it was a good performance holding off field pass. Yeah, and uh, he uh, looks like another one who is going to contribute to the early pace in this race. Yeah, for sure. Mega City looks like a speed horse for certain, so adding to the pace that we talked about with smooth like straight. Matt, another horse I think we need to talk about is a mission office because he's run four races at Churchill Downs on the turf and he's run nothing but good races. He's won two of them, both graded stakes, and he's lost two of them, but both of those losses were close. Like I say, it's a different turf course, but a mission office 
is a nice rallier. He kind of bounces back and forth between longer races and shorter races, but uh, he's done that before and he's done well coming out of a longer race for this one where he didn't get it done against the always tough channel maker, but admission, admission office, especially if there's a little speed, nine furlongs, I think is a good distance for him. A very interesting horse here in the Arlington Mill. Yeah, always a horse to consider and a horse that I think I've, you know, picked in the past, but uh, uh, a horse that's a little bit unpredictable. Like you you mentioned, I think uh, his last two wins did come at Churchill Downs. So that's another reason to consider him um, uh, uh, going to come with uh, with good odds. And, and when he fires his best shot um, in this kind of field, he could be a contender. Yeah, and I think it actually sets up for him pretty well with, with a little bit of speed, not too big a field. I think he's one of the most potent late runners in the field, along with maybe set piece, and you could add sacred life to that group. But admission office is interesting. Nice odds. He, he'll be a horse. I'll be using my exotics for sure. Uh, cellist, Matt, I think is a little bit of a wild card. I, I, I think he's run a lot of good races, sneaky good races. He's run well at Churchill Downs. He, too, has run a, a longer on occasion. Uh, he's a two-time stakes winner at Churchill Downs. He's a horse I can't throw out, but I, I don't know if he beats a field like this or not. Yeah, I agree with that. And and he, his most recent win uh, was in the Louisville, a grade three, again, at Churchill Downs. Yeah, going a little bit longer that time. Yeah. Cellist for uh, Rusty Arnold, too. I think we both like Matt as a kind of... Uh, uh, turf trainer who may not have the big name of some others, but does awfully well in turf races. The only horse we haven't mentioned yet is Cavalry Charge. Uh, I could actually see him running a good race. He's another horse who likes to be a little bit close to the pace. He should be the longest shot in the field for trainer Dallas Stewart off his recent form, but he's capable of popping up. Yeah, definitely going to be the long shot. There you go. All right. That's our look at the Arlington Million, Matt. Uh, a nine horse field and a good betting race, as I say. Looking at the other big race on the turf at Churchill Downs, Matt, we're going to switch to the mares, the Phillies and mares. And we only have five in this Beverly D, probably not as good a betting race. Lily Pond uh, listed at five to one there on the morning line, Matt. I, I do think she'll be lower uh, looking at her recent form. She's a three-year-old, the only three-year-old in this field, but uh, you, you only have to look as far back as last year to see an Aiden O'Brien trained three-year-old winning the Beverly D. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, Aiden O'Brien, you know, Mr. Uh, Group One winner over in uh, in Europe. And, and this uh, this horse, Lily Pond, is coming off of a Group Two victory at the Kerr in Ireland the last time that she ran. Yeah, Lily Pond had uh, stretched out to uh, longer races, a mile and a half, mile and three quarters even, two races back. She dropped back in distance to a mile and eighth, which, of course, this Beverly D will be a mile and eighth race. And she looked good beating older Phillies there in Ireland. So she comes in. She's the only international raider in both of these races. But she is certainly a Philly to watch out for. I think the favorite, though, will be the the the, the mare that's sold uh, for uh, just about three point four million dollars last December. She's run three races since being purchased. She's in the Chad Brown barn. She won the first, the Bogey. She looked good doing it. But uh, the last two, you'd have to say, are just a little bit disappointing. Grade one races in New York. Yes, certainly uh, disappointing efforts. Disappointing because uh, we expect so much from these kind of Chad Brown runners, whether they are the more domestic or the ones that have come over from Europe recently. Uh, um, disappointing also in that she was pretty heavily bet in 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 some of those races odds on kind of uh a uh, 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 wagering prospect uh, last time uh she was fourth in the diana of course that was a good field loaded with chad brown horses before that another disappointing uh performance running fifth in uh new york also in at belmont park and you mentioned that uh, uh she did win the Bogey, a grade three, uh, in her first appearance. Um, disappointments. I think uh, uh, I picked her at other th at times and used her in wagers, so uh, she disappointed me a bit. 
Yeah, we'll have to see. This this might be the last time that she gets favored in a big race if she can't uh, produce here at Churchill Downs. I, I do think this might be a good spot for her, though. The New York uh, was a very slow pace, and uh, she wasn't beaten by all that much. She couldn't quite kick it in late. Um, last time she was run off her feet, they all were run off their feet in the grade one. Diana went in Italian, just got out to the early lead and, and blitzed the field on the lead. So this one could be a little bit different. It, despite the short field, she's the really only closer in the race. The other four, not that they're uh, speed crazy fillies by any means, but they all have some early pace. So Rougier could sit a good spot sitting in last of the five fillies and uh, i i think this might be a bounce back race for her but we'll see uh she's probably the favorite in here but i think there's four four of them will get bet one of the other ones that'll get bet for sure is princess grace matt princess grace likes to win she's won uh all over the country she's got uh races where she's come from off the pace to win but she's also won on the front end and last time she did that impressively, winning on the front end wire to wire at Parks. And that was her second straight win in the uh, Dr. James Penny Memorial. Yeah, the Dr. Penny at, uh, at uh, now Parks Racing uh, was a nice victory for Princess Grace. He talked about horses that uh, uh, in this field that like to run towards the front early on. She is certainly one of them. Yeah, she's certainly one that can do that, and and maybe she has the most pace in the race. Uh, family Way, Lily Pond, you would expect to be forwardly placed at they, as they usually are, and Dalica maybe, when Dalica decides to go early, she has uh, quite a bit of speed too. So it'll be interesting to see how it sets up for Princess Grace. Uh, maybe the most interesting horse in the race, Matt, is Family Way. Um, family Way has run against some really good horses and run good races recently. Three starts back, she won at a mile and a half at Gulfstream Park in the Orchid. But her last two, uh, arguably two of the best turf mares in the country, she ran a good second to. Uh, Warlike Goddess at Keeneland going long. And then in the New York, she she beat Rougier when she was second behind Blinker Street. Yeah, and like, like you just described, uh, uh, we got versatility there going longer. Uh, and, and then in shorter races, and, and you said it, Brian, running a second behind some very, very good turf horses. Yeah, Warlike Goddess and uh, and Bleecker Street, there may be nobody as good in here. So Family Way, if she can come back to those performances, she certainly rates a good shot. She's another one where I'm not sure what her best distance is, Matt. I, 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 at one point, I thought it was going longer. Her last race at a mile and a quarter was quite good. She has done well going shorter before. Uh, we'll have to see if the nine furlong suits her, but another one certainly with a big shot in here is Family Way. Last horse is Dalica. Dalica, uh, trained by Alstall Jr., is a Midwestern filly who's won several stakes races over the years. Uh, like I said, she does have a good turn of early speed. She doesn't always use it, but often she shows that early speed. And breaking from the rail in the short field, I, I think she very well may use it here. Um, maybe just a cut below the grade one level or, or, or this grade one level that you'll see in the other four in the Beverly D. But on the other hand, I, I guess I said it about a few horses in the Arlington Million. Dalica is one that I can't completely throw out in here. Yeah, that's for sure. And, and you know, it is a field of five and, and someone's got to be the longest price. It probably is going to be, uh, it's probably going to be Delica. Um, last time she tried that, that Diana field and finished fat finished fifth, uh, and before that was second in the Mint Julep uh, down at Churchill Downs for Al Stahl. And you mentioned, you know, she's run some good races in the past. Yeah, and, and that Mint Julep was a nice performance at Churchill Downs on the newer turf course. Uh, the Diana, she could not stick with uh, in Italian early, and she kind of gave it up there. But uh, one maybe to consider is a long shot. All right, Matt, uh, a lot of good turf racing this week. Uh, there's the four-star Dave as well at Saratoga. Uh, but now it's time for our top picks. And as usual, I'm going to let you go first. Let's start with the Arlington Million, the big one, the million-dollar Arlington Million. Yeah, certainly. Uh, uh, you know, it's a bigger field. For those of you that like bigger fields, you got it here. For those of you that like wide-open races, you got it here. Uh, uh, and to that, to me, that means I, I just can't be playing uh, the favorites 
in this race, even though they are not going to be real short priced favorites um, like smooth, like straight, who I think uh, uh, ha is the class of the field. But I think the mile and an eighth is pushing his uh, is pushing his distance limits. But it, it's hard to know. It, it's not the same kind of quality field that he's been running against uh, in the past. Anyway, I'm going to go for a little bit of a bigger price. I'm going to take a shot with one of the maker horses. I'm going to go with Field Pass. Field Pass. Interesting, Matt. Yeah, he's a horse who knocks on the door often. It'll be see, interesting to see if he can get over the hump, but you might even get double digits on that Arlington Million pick, pick in there. I'm going to go with one of the uh, – I don't think he'll be favored, but he'll be one of the horses bet a little bit. But as you said – Pretty wide open race, uh, four to one on the morning line. Set piece is my top pick. I, I like that record at Churchill Downs. I like the fact that he gets some speed in here. I like him at nine furlongs. Last time I watched the Forbidden Apple, and I know he did not have a clear chip in the clear trip in the stretch when he really wanted to run. This time I think he can uh, uh, come motoring down the stretch. And of the closers, I'm looking for a closer in this race. I already mentioned I'll uh, use admission office a little bit. I respect Santine, too, quite a bit, uh, stalking the lead. I, too, want to beat the favorite smooth like straight. But for me, set piece, wide open race, but set piece will be my top pick. How about you in the Beverly D, Matt? Beverly D, only five horses in there, but I think it's a pretty wide open a wide open race. And I think, as I alluded to, uh, I, I, just can't, I just can't go with Rogier. Uh, Rougier. Rougier is probably going to be the favorite. Um, yes, Chad Brown, she could certainly bounce back in here and, and, and get back in the winner circle, but um, I just can't go with her again. I'm going to go with uh, Brandon Walsh and Family Way. Yeah, Family Way could be, could be a filly who's uh, turning the corner into a real grade one mare. So I don't mind that pick at all, Matt. I, I do think all four of them will get that, the four principals in the Beverly D, and uh, I wouldn't suspect there's a heavy favorite. So I, I did land on the favorite, Rougier. I think she will be the favorite, even though she's coming off two losses. I just think this is the spot for her to turn it around. If she doesn't turn it around here, uh, then I think we uh, are looking at a disappointment uh, from that big buy last year, a group one winner uh, against really good horses in France last year. I still believe in her a little bit. I think she can get it done. I think this is probably a good spot, almost a European style nine furlong race at Churchill Downs on Saturday. Those are our top picks. Now, before we go, I want to get your opinion on the Whitney from last week, because uh, we build it as a race with some of the best older males in the country. And uh, we both thought Life is Good was the most likely winner, and he did win. But a little bit disappointing performance by Olympiad, maybe a little bit better performance by, uh, uh, by Happy Saver to get second. Hot Rod Charlie seemed to do what he does, ran a good race in defeat. Then there was some uh, race riding tactics by Mr. Arad Ortiz Jr., yeah, there sure was. And, and of course, you add to that, there was uh, uh, one of those summer Saratoga sudden uh, uh, rainstorm shortly before the race. So the, the track had been sealed and then opened up and the, the, the Saratoga track has been very, very deep uh, as of late and tiring. All of those were factors that heading to post uh, had trainer Todd Platcher a little, a little bit concerned for life is good but uh hey he certainly showed up and and ran a big race and uh, uh yep Olympi olympiad uh, was certainly a little bit disappointing we've talked about those win streaks and how hard it is to maintain them especially when you get a scott to step up and face a horse like life like life is good you mentioned that race riding by um I read all our tees, certainly not a feather in the cap of a very talented rider like I read and for, for racing, uh, was not necessary. He was, he was a winner at that point, hundred yards or so from the wire, uh, um, uh, for whatever reason, uh, uh, you know, moving over into the path of, uh, uh, John, uh, of Johnny V on happy saver and maybe johnny v was going to move off of the rail anyway because it really hadn't been the place to be but 
um, when IRAD did that, there was suddenly the possibility that um, IRAD, uh, that uh, Johnny V and Happy Saver weren't going to get second place. And, and it turned into, uh, you know, a closer finish for second place than it should have been. Yeah, well, even before that, and something I think no one has talked about was Irad was race riding Hot Rod Charlie to keep him very wide. Hot Rod Charlie was first coming up on the outside, coming out of the turn. And I, I think that was a big part of the reason that Happy Saver made such a move is because the rail just opened up by path on the rail. And then Irad, after after uh, keeping Hot Rod Charlie very wide on the turn, made a big move. He just seems like a rider, for whatever reason, more so than ever lately, seems to believe he owns the road, man. And I, I think it's I think it's getting to a point where it's dangerous. So many races he rides where he just moves his horses wherever he wants to and uh, really bothers a lot of other horses in the race. I agree. It was unnecessary. I think he was on the best horse in the Whitney. Life is good. Um, showed again that he's one of the best dirt horses in the country and winning the Whitney. But on the other hand, I, I'm not sure that if he exactly, if he exactly excited me if we're talking about the 10 furlong Krieger Breeders' Cup Classic in a few months at Keeneland. Yeah, I agree. You have to wonder. You have to wonder about that, and 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 we'll see uh, with that uh, uh, what Flightline does when he returns to race in the Pacific Classic, going a mile and a quarter. What happens out there? Yeah, you you have to wonder a little bit. As good and as brilliant as Life Is Good has been uh, uh, in his career. Uh, if that mile and a quarter is uh, is an optimal distance. Exactly. Exactly. Well said, sir. Yeah, I'm, I'm also wondering now if the three-year-olds might be uh, a three-year-old like Epicenter, for, for example, might be a little bit more of a factor. I think that door was opened a little bit by the Whitney. But as you say, I do believe Flightline is the best horse in the country, but he's only won run, one race. He's never yeah. been farther than a mile. He's never been two turns. So the mile and a quarter, we still have to question whether he'll be healthy and at his best at a mile and a quarter. But uh, yeah, Flightline is the horse to beat now, maybe even more so in my eyes after the Whitney. But uh, I'm thinking three-year-olds a little bit too yeah. for the Breeders' Cup Classic. All right, that's yeah, the show. Matt, before that's... we go, let's get a parting shot from you, my friend, up there in upstate New York. Yeah, I, and I I agree with that sentiment about the three-year-olds uh, 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 as horses to watch. Uh, the rest of the summer and the early fall prepping for the breeders cup uh classic there's some talented horses who are just going to get stronger and better uh as the year year goes by i brian i think i'm gonna i'm really going to be curious about the the kind uh, and the amount of betting that churchill downs handles on these uh Arlington races because you certainly see a lot of you know negative comments on social media about uh, the, the these Churchill races and the closing of Churchill and the races going there and you know throw in the the sketchy turf course and the fact that they're going to be up against racing at Saratoga and Del Mar uh, on Saturday. I'll be curious to see how much money they handle. Yeah, good point, Matt. Uh, Churchill Downs uh, they are the parent company that uh, ended the reign at Arlington International Racecourse, and now they have these races. A, a little bit of a sad day, as I mentioned. Uh, but we wish you luck betting these turf races. Always fun to bet turf races. We want to thank our sponsor, Derby Wars, the best contest site out there. I also want to remind you folks, uh, we really appreciate you watching. Go ahead and and subscribe now to our YouTube channel here at Horse Racing Nation. We do appreciate it. Thanks to Candace Curtis for the race graphics. Next week, I know we'll be talking about some big mile and a quarter races from upstate New York and even north of the border with the Alabama and the Queens plate coming, Matt. That's exciting. But for now, we'll bid you adieu. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week right here on Horse Senator.